our previous awakening video looked at the cataclysmic earthquake, tsunami, and firestorm in Lisbon, and how it was viewed by millennial and biblical scholars. In 1780 as the 19th century approached, the next heavenly sign prophesied in the New Testament took place. Recall chapter 6 verse 12 of the book of Revelations. Lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Also see, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Matthew 24, 29 both appeared to happen, the moon seemed to have disappeared, but when it was seen it had a red color. This was a big deal at that time. This entry is from Wikipedia's History of the United States in 1780. You can clearly read. May 19th, New England's dark day, an unaccountable darkness spreads over New England, regarded by some observers as a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Revolutionary War soldier Joseph Plum Martin noted. We were in New Jersey at the time the dark day happened, 19th of May. It has been said that the darkness was not so great in New Jersey as in New England. How great it was there, I do not know, but I know that it was very dark where I then was in New Jersey, so much so that the fowls went to their roosts, the cocks crew and the whippoorwills sung their usual serenade. The people had to light candles in their houses to enable them to see to carry on their usual business, the night was as uncommonly dark as the day was. The poet Whittier wrote, it was on a May day of the far old year 1780, that there fell over the bloom and sweet life of the spring, over the fresh earth and the heaven of noon, a horror of great darkness. Birds ceased to sing, and all the barnyard fowls roosted, the cattle at the pasture bars lowed, and looked homeward bats on leather wings flittered abroad. The sounds of labor died. Men prayed, and women wept. Here is another account from that time, an account of a very uncommon darkness in the states of New England, May 19, 1780. By Samuel Williams, professor of mathematics and philosophy in the University of Cambridge, Massachusetts. The extent of this darkness was very remarkable. From the accounts that have been received, it seems to have extended all over the New England states. It was observed as far east as Portland, Maine. To the westward, we hear of its reaching to the furthest parts of Connecticut and Albany. To the southward, it was observed all along the seacoasts. And to the north as far as our settlements extend. With regard to its duration, it continued in this place at least 14 hours, but it is probable this was not exactly the same in different parts of the country. The appearance and effects were such as tended to make the prospect extremely dull and gloomy. Candles were lighted up in the houses, the birds having sung their evening songs, disappeared, and became silent, the fowls retired to roost, the cocks were crowing all around as at break of day, objects could not be distinguished but at a very little distance, and everything bore the appearance and gloom of night. In William Sears' book, Thief in the Night or the Strange Case of the Missing Millennium published by George Ronald Oxford, England, 1st edition 1961. He noted, Many of the scholars made much of the uniqueness of this event, pointing out that it was not a natural eclipse of the sun, but a sudden darkening of the sky, with the moon having the appearance of blood. Many explanations were advanced for this phenomenon, but the millennial scholars were at least agreed that it was the fulfillment of the prophecy which was important, and not the manner at which it came to pass. Some protested that the dark day was not seen by the whole world. Others replied that the star of Bethlehem was seen only in the Middle East, and that half the world is dark each day, how could all see it at once? The excitement and debates were vigorous. Excitement over Christ's return grew in ratio to the intensity of the disputes. Reports on the internet state that in 2015 modern science finally has a theoretical explanation for the dark day, a combination of smoke from a Canadian forest fire, combined with fog and heavy cloud cover. That theory is not so new, the Reverend Spicer wrote in 1917. At the time, some explained the darkness as being due to smoke from forest fires, others to the exceptional rise of vapors and atmospheric dust in the warm spring following the melting of unusually heavy winter snows. 
but forest fires were not of extraordinary occurrence in these regions, and many a springtime since has seen the melting of heavy winter snows and the rise of vapors, yet May 19, 1780, still stands unique in the annals of modern times as the dark day.